Well, today is May 12th, week number 12. And this is the second class this week. Do you guys have any questions? If you don't have any questions, then I think I'm gonna move forward with the um, with, with the logarithm. So that's a recap. Okay, do you guys have any questions on the quiz? Any questions on the quizzes? Yes, no? Okay, so let's uh, continue on logarithm. Okay. Today is, I think we, we will continue with, uh, still with log 15, 55A, we're gonna recap, we're gonna recap here. Okay, the material of recap here is that we are doing um, we are in this logarithm section. Okay, so I'm going to introduce the definition of logarithm in general case. Okay, so we understand we understand that. When we saw, well, when we have an, a logarithm form and we will have a respective exponential form. So exponential form and the logarithm form, they are just these two forms that are, you know, the two sides of one coin, right? So we have a study, for example, for two to the power of uh, three, that equals to eight, right? And we know that that corresponds to um, log base two of eight, that equals to three, right? And for, uh, and we can write it in different order, right? And for log base two of, you know, we can write in the reverse order. We can write it in the reverse order. And these two bases are always the same. And we just switch positions. So logarithm is to expressing the power and exponential is to express uh, the consequence of the power on the base, okay? So let's look at another example. Common log, which we practice, right? Say common log 100, that equals to two. And that is the same thing as saying, hey, 10 squared is equals to 100. So this is the two sides of a coin. And we have also done um, <clears throat> the other situation, which is log, say block base seven, right? Of one over seven, right? That equals to negative one because seven, this base seven raised to the power of negative one is one over seven. Okay, so let me make the fonts larger so you can see the negative sign here. Okay, so all of these, okay, with different bases, hold on, I missed this base, sorry. Okay, and we can keep the list go on, right? And we certainly have done exercise on log 55a, right? Which log base three of nine equals to two because three raised to the power of two is equal to nine, right? So these are the two sides of the coin. But what is the general definition? What is the general definition?
of logarithm. Logarithm. Okay, the general definition of logarithm is this. Okay, if you look at the if you look at these, right? Can remove that. We have that already. Okay, the general definition of logarithm. Of course, you're going to have the logarithm sign, and it will have a base. Okay, and we we can we can have the base two, base ten, base seven, base three. So all of these will collectively will be called a B. And now at the position in the place of eight, 100, one seven, nine, that position we're gonna call it omega, or you can call it or baloney, whatever. It equals to something on the right-hand side, right? It can be two, can be three, can be negative one, it can be two, you know, any number. So we're gonna together represent them by a triangle and this will lead to the exponential form, which is the triangle, the number at the triangle place, power the base, right? You see three power the two, two power 10, negative one power seven, right? Two power three. So the base is being powered by triangle is equal to baloney, omega. You guys follow me? Okay, so this is the general definition of logarithm. In addition, we have some requirement about the base B. Okay, the requirement about base B. The requirement about base B is saying, okay, this B must be positive and it cannot be equals to one. It cannot equals to one. Now, we look at these definition, we have this definition in front of us and let's look at what we have done. <clears throat> okay, let's look at what we have done. For base equals to two, Right, for base equals to two, base two certainly is not equals to one, it is positive. And it will turn into <clears throat> base two and that's base two, right? For base equals to 10, we will get that definition and this is 10, right? If it's a 10, if base is 10, the logarithm base 10 will be considered the default notation of logarithm. So when we write log, it is assumed to be log base, the base is 10. So we don't have to specify the base when the base is 10. Okay. And and the base could go on forever. So for example, if the base is three and the definition will turn into, and over here, that's gonna be three. We have to specify the three. I'm sorry, three. Oh, sorry, my, this is a triangle. My bad, okay. So base is a three, okay. If base is a seven, Okay, if base is seven and this turned to seven and the list could go on, the list could go on, okay? Recall what we did with base two, okay? So recall, so now we have this general definition, okay? We have this general definition as it will apply to all of the uh, situation we have studied. Right? So this is the general definition. This is the most important thing. So the base we study is two and so on and so forth, right? For example, before, right? Before we have studied say um, log base two of 
Okay, let me put it here, okay? Law of base 201 equals two. Okay, I, I want to check if, check on you guys if you still remember. We'll figure this out. Okay. Order. Do you know the answer? Do we still know the answers? Yes? Recapping. Okay. We did the discuss uh, introduction. Okay, so this is number one. This is number two. This is number three. Okay, and this time we're doing the we're doing all of these under the definition of the of this general definition. Six, seven. Okay, so let me give you one more. Uh, let's just make a 16, just for the fun of it. So what will be the answer for log base two of a quarter? How do you figure out? Not by memorization, not by memorization. We can apply the definition. We can apply the definition. Okay, we can apply the definition. Okay, by definition, we have here, the, in this case, we have the base is two, right? The base is two. And we have a quarter here. Oops, the quarter here, right? And we want to figure out this number. And then we're going to be asking the question, what number raised to the power, right? So what number raised to, uh, what a number power two, what a number power two is going to give us a quarter, right? So then we realize, oh, two to the power of negative two gave me the quarter. Therefore, this should be negative two. And therefore, this answer is going to be negative two. Okay, so now I want I would like you guys to apply the definition. Okay, you 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 copy this table, right? You copy this table to try to figure out these numbers from the perspective of the definition. And here the base is two. Okay, we've done this before, but now we're doing it in a from a different perspective from the general definitions perspective. So what does that equal to? Everybody, let's see who's here. Alan, <clears throat> Francisco, Marcelo. Let's participate, let's, let's do it. So what is log base two of half equal to? And how do we figure out, right? Omega is half, right? So this omega need to be half. So what power <clears throat> in the place of triangle will give us half? That's how we figure out, right? That's how we figure out. And it turned out it's negative one. So this must be negative one. And then your answer will just be negative one. Now, I want you guys to work out these remaining five questions, remaining five questions from the definition. Okay, give yourself the time, give, give yourself the, the gift of time. And figure that out. Okay, you can see I leave some space between them. 
Okay, and this is these are the reasons. These are the reasons. Okay, this is the reason. This is the why. And these are the answers. Okay. All right. I'm going to I'm going to ask them, I'm going to ask for answers from you guys, okay? Ellen, what will be the answer to number 3? You can type it on chat or you can also speak up. Ellen? What is the answer to number three? Francisco? Oh, zero. Okay, Alan has an answer. Okay, good. Zero. Because when omega is one, two to the power zero equals to one. Very good. Okay, so therefore this must be zero. Marcelo, what is log base two of two? Marcelo's turn. Marcelo? Did I, did, did I pronounce your name right? Marcelo or Marcello? Marcelo? No, the, the fourth one, number four. Still thinking. Okay, Francisco, number four. Francisco, number four. Question mark. What number should be at the place of the question mark? One. Perfect. Okay. Because if this number is two, we're trying to figure out what number power two, what number power two should equal to this two. Okay. So there's two, two here. Okay. The, this number is the word we're looking for, but this number we're looking for power, the base two should equal to this larger two. And that turned out to be, so we need to have something that power two equals to two. And of course that's one, right? So if this triangle is one, this triangle is one. So this is how you figure out. This is how we figure out. Okay. So Marcelo, are you ready for number five? Do you think you might be ready for number five? Okay, if you're not ready, just watch, okay? Just watch. Can I answer? Oh, sure. Yes, Francisco, what is it? Your answer is two. Very good. Two, perfect. Because if this is a four and this must be four, right? You see, you see they're, they're connected in this chain reaction, right? In this chain reaction. So you'd be asking what number power two is going to give me four? Of course, that's two squared. If this triangle is two squared and this triangle must be two squared, okay? Therefore, the answer is two. Now, two more. Two more. What is the log base two of eight? What does that equal to? Three. Excellent, right? So this is eight. So we want this to be eight. And power two to the power of three is eight. Therefore, this is three. Therefore, that is three. Great. One more. Four. Okay. So. This is a 16, 
and that's a 16, right? So you got the hang of it, that you got the hang of it. So therefore, this is a four. Very good job, very good job. Now I'm gonna give you another set of exercise, okay? Using this definition, okay? This other set of exercise, I'm gonna set up the same way. Okay. And I also have the whys. I'll have the whys. Okay, I have the whys here. But this time, I'm going to use base three. I'm going to use base three. Okay. So what are we going to have here? Okay. We're still going to have one, two, three, four, five, uh, maybe just five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we just do five. So what we're gonna have, we're gonna have log base three. So I'm gonna have log base three here. And the first number I'm gonna give you is one over nine. The next number I'm gonna give you is this, that. Three, nine. <clears throat> You're gonna give me the answer. You're gonna give me the answer, and you're gonna and you're gonna have the you're gonna work out the 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 why. You're gonna work out the why. Of course, the base is three now. Okay, the base is three now. Got it? Same drill, a different base. Same drill, same, uh, different, different base. Just five numbers, just five numbers. Okay, I want you guys to use the definition, use the definition. Identify omega and triangle. Okay, so all of these are triangles. Okay, so all of these answers are in the place of triangle. What are they? Different questions, different triangles. You can use a question mark if you wish. Right, do you see? This is the chain that connects these two relationships. And we just want to know this triangle. We want to know the value of the triangle. Okay, so usually this piece is on scratch paper. Okay, this piece is on scratch paper. Okay, this piece is it's on scratch paper. You don't need to show the teacher. You don't need to show the teacher. Okay, but to figure the, uh, figure out the answer, we need to do something on the scratch paper. Okay. All right. We start over. Okay, maybe we start with Ellen. Marcelo, you think you might be ready this time? Good, good. Okay, so you want to try the first one. Log base three of one over nine. So the number at the place, so we have log base three, log base three. So omega is one ninth. And we want to figure out what this number should be. So omega is one ninth. So what number power three is gonna give us one over nine? And that number will be replacing the triangle, we're replacing this triangle, and we'll be replacing this triangle. And we got the answer. We got the answer. Do you guys see that? Okay. Alan? Francisco, Marcelo. Just give the answer. 
we're working on these together. We're practicing using the, the, the definition. Practice using the, the definition. So what should that number be? That's right, negative two. We got two correct answers. Wonderful, okay? Because two to the power of negative two, right? That equals to one over three squared. And that equals to one over nine. Therefore, that the number at the place of the triangle is negative two. Therefore, the answer is negative two. Now, how about log base three of one third? Okay, please use definition. Okay, please use definition, negative one. Very good. Okay, so this is one third. And this is a negative one because three raised to the power of negative one equals to one third. How about log base three of one? What does that equal to? I'm looking at the chat. Okay, you can submit your answer any way you want. Okay, but I want you guys to participate. Since we're here, we just we may just as well learn something, right? We just as well learn something. What does that equal to? What will be this number? Right? So to figure out, we know what the number at the place of omega. So this number must be one. So what number power three equals to one? What number power three equals to one? One? Three to the power one equals to one? Three to the power one equals to what? Equals to three, right? Zero, that's right, zero. Perfect. So this is zero. And this is zero. Do you guys see that? Do you get the hang of it? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay, actually, I'm, I'm going to give you a number six. I'm going to give you a number six. So right now, please do number four and five. Okay, number six. We have four, five, six. Four, five, six. Number four, what is the answer to number four? Yay, perfect, right? Because if omega is three, omega is three, so three raised to the power of one is three. Therefore, this must be one and that must be one. You guys see the consistency. Now, number five and number six. I think you guys are really getting, getting the hang of it. Okay, really getting the hang of it. Oops, sorry. What number power three equals to nine? That's number five. Number five. So what's the answer to number five? I might be give you a number, I will give you a question number seven.
two, very good. Okay. So this equals to two, why? Because if this is nine, three to the power of two equals to nine. So this must be true, therefore that's true. How about number six? Very good job, Ellen. Uh, next one, number six. What's number six? What is the answer to number six? Nine? Okay, so let's see, let's check. If this is nine, this is 27. If this is a nine, what does that mean? That means three raised to the power of nine equals to 27. Is that true? Three raised to the power of nine equals to 27. Is that true or not? Three to the power of nine. is equals to three times three times three times three, how many times? Nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So would that be true? No, that's not true, right? So nine is not the answer, right? So nine is wrong. So what, that, what answer should it be? So what number power, what number power three will give us 27? Three, yay, you're right, okay? Okay, so three to the power of three, Okay, three to the power of three, hold on, I'm sorry. Okay, three to the power of three will give us three times three times three, three times, that's 27. So three to the power of three equals to 27. Therefore, this is three and that's the answer. Now, log of base three of root three. What does that equal to? What does that equal to? If we're quoting the definition, if we're quoting the definition, if we're quoting the definition, right? And the root three is at the place of omega. Okay? And so omega is root three. Okay, so B raised to what power, right? Our base is three. So what number power three give us the root three? What would that number be? Anybody want to tell me? Anybody want to tell me? Ellen? Let me tell you, that number is half. Okay. And therefore, the triangle is half. And this answer is half. Okay, so we're getting we get something a little bit more complicated, right? A little bit different, a little bit different, right? A little bit. Root is involved. Root is involved. 
Okay. Regarding root, root and exponential form has some um, a relationship by definition. For example, root two is written as two raised to the power of half. Power, power, sorry, my bad, okay. Power of half, okay. It's a smaller number on the shoulder, okay, on the shoulder, okay. So how do we compose this number, right? How do we compose this number? For example, if I have three raised to the power of uh, one-fifth, how, does, how is that written into a root? Well, this is what happens. The, the power is a fraction. In this fraction, there's a denominator and there's a numerator. The denominator five goes here. And there's three to the power of one, three raised to the power of one. The numerator of the exponent goes here. Okay, so this is a conversion between uh, power and the roots, okay? So in general, okay? So suppose you have a base raised to the power of a fraction, okay? Is M over N, okay? The power is a fraction. And in the root form, it's written like this. The denominator n goes to the root. That's the root number. B goes inside. And the numerator is going to go here. Okay. All right? So now, with that understanding, could you please write it down? We're gonna work out. We're gonna work out another table like this. Okay, are you ready? Your participation is greatly appreciated. Okay, but this time I'm gonna use base ten. Okay, so I'm gonna give you different numbers. Okay, don't hold on. This time is base ten. All of these. And this time I'm gonna give you some more uh, random numbers. Okay, I'm gonna give you more random numbers. And the definition here is going to be for base 10. Okay, for base 10. So this is a common log and that's 10. Is that clear? So we're gonna have a change of theme. I'm gonna change, I'm changing all of these in front of your eyes. Okay, no secret, okay, no secret. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste and put all of these rules and you're gonna play the same game. You're playing the same game. Just practicing using definition and uh, I'm gonna give you the omega. Okay, I'm gonna give you the omega, okay? So all of these are base 10 common log, they're called a common log, okay? This is the, you know, most of calculator has this function, but of course we're not using a uh, calculator, okay? 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 1, 10, <clears throat> 1,000, okay? This is 1 million, okay? And this one is square root of 10. Okay. I'm going to bring back that uh, general form for you, just in case you need it. Okay. And this time I'm adding a question. I'm adding a number eight adding a number eight. So you insert one more row 
number eight. Okay, and this time is a log root, cubic root of 10. So you're gonna give me all these answers, please. Okay, practice makes perfect. Okay, practice makes perfect. I know you can do it. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The first one. First one. What is the answer to the first one? What is the answer to the first one? Okay, take your time, take your time, okay? Logarithm is one of those hard topics. It's one of those hard topics, okay? What I hope is that from this introduction we can do together, I will give you a good um, preparation for your future courses, okay? I believe you, in your future courses, you will have to deal with this at another level, at another level. So depending on your uh, your uh, aspiration, whether you're going through the calculus theories or you're going to, you know, other, uh, you know, other majors, uh, this is going to be with you for some time. Alan, Alan gave an answer here is negative two. That's a perfect answer. But how did he get it, right? So 0 0.01, which is a match. You can see this is a perfect match, right? Perfect match. And we're gonna figure out the, the triangle. So the triangle should be what? It will give us 0 0.01, right, Alan? And now we know that if the, if the triangle is negative 10, if the triangle is negative 10, negative 10 is equals to what? Is it equals to one over 10 squared? Right, that's one over 100. 10 squared is 100. One divided by 100 is 0 0.01. Therefore, negative two is the answer to the triangle there. And this is a triangle. And therefore the answer is negative two. Is that right? Is that how you figure out, Alan? Okay, so continue. Number two. Number two. So keep going. Negative one, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so here is 0 0.1 and this is 0 0.1, right? So all you have to do is see, hey, what's the, what's the number at the position of omega? And that's 0 0.1, right? So the answer we are looking for is it going to make all of these true, right? So what number power 10 equals to 0 0.1? And that's one over 10, isn't it? That's one over 10. And therefore the triangle is negative one and this triangle is gonna be negative one, okay? So now number three, you guys are getting it. I'm so I'm so pleased. Okay, you are getting it. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're getting there. And each time I added a, you know, added one or two harder questions, and you are getting those too. And then we're gonna com we're gonna compare these three tables. Okay, we'll work out three tables, and we're gonna see what we have found. Let's see what do we have found. Okay, we're gonna find some patterns for sure. We're gonna find some patterns for sure. So what's the common log one equals to? 
Yep. Perfect answer, Francisco. Okay. Because when the omega equals to one, right? Log one, log one, and we're trying to figure out the answer, and that answer has to um, make sure this is a true statement. So what number power 10 equals to one? Of course, that's a zero, right? If that triangle is zero, this triangle is zero. Therefore, uh, that is zero. You got it. You got it. Number four. Let's look at number four. You guys are amazing. You are really getting it. You're really, really getting it. Log base, log, a common log 10. What is a common log 10 equal to? So omega is 10. So what number power 10 equals to 10? What number power 10 equals to 10? Because all of these are related. Right? All of these are related. Number four. What is log 10, log 10, common log 10? What's log 10? What is a common log 10? Come on. One, yes. Yes. Okay. Because if this is 10, the number that power 10 equals to 10, that must be one. So this is one. Oh, sorry, I'm putting it in the wrong place. That's one. Okay. Now, common log 1000. Common log 1000. Two. Okay, let's try two. So this is 1000. And you think the answer is two. That means 10 to the power two equals to 1,000, is that right? Obviously not, right? So it's not two. So what, what is it? Three, yes, three, yes, okay? Because 10 to the power of three is 1,000. Therefore, this is three and that is three. Very good. Number six, log of 1 million, common log of 1 million. What should that be? Six, yay. That's right, 1 million. Right, that equals to six, 
because 10 to the power of six equals to 1 million. Very good job. Now, a little bit harder. Log base, that's a common log 10, a common log of square root of 10. What would that be? Omega is a square root of 10. One half, excellent, beautiful, beautiful. One half. One half. One half. Okay, now this one is a little bit harder. Okay, your omega is something like this. Okay, so that's omega. So what will be that a triangle? You may want to reference the notation here. What is the what, what what is the answer? Take your time. This can be written as ten raised to what power? Ten raised to what power? From here. That's right. Two thirds. Right. So. Two thirds to power 10 is 10 to the power of two thirds. Okay, so that's it going to, that's going to be two thirds and that's going to be two thirds. Okay, so now we're going to work, we have made a three tables. We have made three tables. Okay, so now I want you guys to explore some more with me. Okay, explore, explore some more with me. Because of all these reasoning, right? Because of all these reasoning on the left-hand side, right? Log base or common log 0 0.01 is really common log 10 to the power of negative two, is that right? Because we know 0 0.01 is the same as one over 10 squared is the same of 10 to the power of negative so I just simply replace 0 0.01 by its equal. And then, and this negative two is the same as this answer, negative two. Do you guys follow me? Do you see that pattern? Next one, 0 0.1 is, 0 0.1 is the same as one over 10. It's the same as 10 to the power of negative one. And negative one is the same as the answer negative one. So when we are able to write the C, C the common log base is 10, and this exponential form is base also 10. So once this, this base 10 and this base 10, when these two makes a match, the answer is simply the power. Do you see that? Now, Log base one, log 10, not log one, sorry. Log one is log 10 to the power of zero, okay? So I just simply bring these answers over here, okay? So the zero is brought down, okay? And that is log 10, 10 to the power of one equals to one. And over here is log 10 to the power of, Three, that's the three. Do you guys see that? And this is the log of 10 to the power of six. So the answer is six. And this one equals to log 
10 to the power of half. Sorry. 10 to the power of half. Okay, so I combine the reasons over here. Okay, how about here? That's going to be log 10 to the power of two thirds. What do you see? What do you see? What pattern do we see? We saw some patterns, right? We saw those patterns. And then you may say, oh, maybe this pattern only works for base 10. Hmm, how about let's, let's look, let's look. Okay, so how about base three? Right, did we do base three somewhere? Base, we did base two, so let's do base two. Okay, let's do base two. In base two, we have these patterns, right? So let's continue. And that's log base two. One quarter is the same as two to the power of negative one. So I can put this two to the power of negative two. Okay, one quarter is two to the power of negative two. Okay, and half is two to the power of negative one. So I'm replacing half by two to the power of negative one. So log base two, do you guys follow me? Two to the power of now, one can be replaced by two raised to the power of zero. Do you see that pattern being expanded? Yes? So log base two of two to the power of one. And over here is log base two two to the power two. And over here is log base two, two to the power of three, so, right? So I'm combining these y's, right? Over here is log base two over two to the power of four. Now, we did not, we did eight for a common log. So let's do one more. So I'm gonna see if you guys are following me, okay? I'm gonna give you another question number eight. Question number eight. And I want you to give me the answer to log base two of, uh, I'm gonna give you a hard number. I wanna give you a hard number, okay? Two times root two. What does that equal to? A little bit challenging, okay? A little bit challenging, but I know you can do it. So basically you try to figure out what is that number should equal to that triangle if and only if, okay, two is powered by that triangle should equal to two times of root two. I know you're being challenged. You're being challenged. Okay, so we're playing with these numbers. So what is that triangle? What does that number equal to? Yeah, two times root two. You can figure out, I know you're, you're, I, I know you're getting there, okay? And don't forget, That a b raised to the power of m over n is equal to root n nth root b raised to the power of n.
Alan, is that your answer? Well, this is the answer to, to something else. Did you have an answer for, for number eight, Alan? Or well, I, I, I was a little bit lost. I think that was earlier. Okay, no, 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 not yet. Okay, take your time, take your time, okay? Take your time, don't worry. Take your time, don't worry. Okay, let me give you some hint. I'll give you some hint. Work on this part, okay? Because you have a two to the power of one and you have a multiply, right? The square root of two is two raised to the power of half, right? So you just have to take and you have to think of the b to the power of m, multiply b raised to the power of n. Think about that. And then you're getting something. You're getting something, which is 2 raised to the power of 1 plus half. That should give us some clue. That should give us some clue. So two. That's right, that's right, okay? So this is going to be equals to two raised to the power of three half, okay? So this guy is equals to two raised to the power of three half. So three half must be in this place. Therefore, it's in that place. Therefore, it's in that place. Did you get it? Okay, so let's look at what we did for base three. Oh, where's, where, where's our base three? There, okay, base three. We have seven questions. We're gonna, we're gonna have eight, eight of them. So now let's combine this, right? So we got, log base three, right? One over nine is equal to three to the power of the negative two. Boom, negative two, negative two, base three, base three. See, base three, base three. Uh, over here, we get log base three, three to the power of negative one, as we have indicated over here, and boom, right? See base three and base three and negative one, negative one. Do you guys see that? And log base three, one is equal to three to the power of zero. So three to the power of zero. Okay. And this one is log base three raised to the power three raised to the power of one, right? So you know the rest, right? You know the rest. I'm, I'm gonna give you one additional question before we take the break, okay? So log base three of three to the power of three as it was indicated here. Three to the power of three is 27. And over here, we can combine the reason, right? So over here, that's three raised to the power of one half. And one more question I'm gonna give you. One more question I'm gonna give you, okay? So this question, we call number eight. We call number eight. I'm gonna have a common, I'm gonna have a log base three. And here I'm gonna have one over root three. Now I want that answer. I want that answer. 
Okay, I want that answer. Okay, so base three here, so omega is here. Triangle is unknown, we don't know. Okay, three to the power triangle. This guy is going to be that. A little bit more challenging, but I know you can do it. What is the answer? You want to work the powers as well. You want to work the powers as well. Okay, so this is going to be And what is root three in terms of power, right? Are you getting there? Are you getting there? I know you are. I know you are getting there. Root three is three raised to the power of one. Isn't it? So you multiply these two exponents, right? Negative one, multiply that. And that's gonna be, what would that be? Negative half, right? And so that's that triangle is negative half and this triangle is negative half and that triangle is gonna be negative. And of course, we can combine them into this form. Okay, so that's three raised to the power of negative half. You got it? Okay, I, I just wanna get you guys to the, to the break. After you come back, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do, okay? We have worked out three tables. Okay, this is the first table, and this is the second table, right? And uh, we have the first table. First table is base two, right? First table. Okay, so I'm taking part of those tables we worked out and we look at solely we look at solely on these tables. Okay, along with definition, we want to look for patterns. Okay, if we find some pattern, we're gonna keep that pattern and we question if that is true for any base. Okay, so we have base two, base three, base 10. We, have, we obviously have found some patterns here, right? And over here, I'm gonna also combine that thing, which is log of base two. Right, which we already worked out, which is two raised to the power of three half. Okay, so we want to see what pattern we found. Okay, so coming back, uh, we will ba be back at 11.50. So now I've, I'm putting all these three tables here to see what, what pattern can we find. Okay, what pattern can we find? Okay, 
ready? So let's take a break. 10 minutes. Okay, guys. Let's come back to see what pattern have we found. What pattern have we found? Right? What pattern have we found? What pattern have we found? Okay. On the first row of each table, what do you see? On the first row of the table, what ta what what do we what do we see? Right? The first one is log base two. Second one is log base three, and the, the third one is log base 10. So if we have a common log, if we have a log base B and we have B squared, what will be the answer? Look at the three examples. The first row, first, second, third. What will be the answer? Right, we know all the reasons, right? We have embedded the reasons in our, in our work. So what do we see from the first row? Oh, negative two, sorry, negative two. And the answer would be what? What is the answer? Right, in this case, base is two, base is two. In this case, base is three. Base is 10, 10, 10. So what will be the answer? What will be the answer? Yeah, are you guys with me? We make this table. Okay, I'm, let me remake this table. I'm waiting for everybody to join. Okay, uh, make the fourth column. First column. One, two, three, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need one more row. Okay, so eight row, that's one, that's two. And that's number three. Okay, so what a pattern. So the pattern we're gonna find, the pattern we find, uh, I'm gonna make a, a, I'm gonna number these uh, column. Okay, so this is number one. Number two, we're on a pattern finding. Uh, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and the first row is, is pattern finding. So what a pattern have we identified? Okay, I put something at the bottom. So now I can erase all of these. Okay. So copy. Cut it. From the first row, okay, base B is two, base B is two, and this is two to the power of negative two, and base three, three to the power of negative two, and base 10, 10 to the power of negative two. And now we have a base B to represent B raised to the power of negative two for all three cases. This is the representative, right? The B can be two. If this B is a two, it's the first one. If B is three, that is, that is the second one. If B is 10, and that's the third one. What do they all equal to? What do they all equal to? Do you guys follow me? Do you guys follow me? Are you guys there? Alan? So what is the answer? I uh, answer all, all three, right? Is what? What's the answer? Negative two, right? Is that right? Negative two. This is the pattern which we have found. Okay. The second row. Let me make it a little bit smaller. Okay. On the second row, I mean, number two, right? So this is a negative one, and this is a negative one. I think I need to make the font just a little bit larger because I'm, I'm worried that you may not see the negative sign. Uh, 170%. Okay, better. Okay. So the second one, what do we see? We see that log base B b to the power of a negative one or log base b of one over b, right? So in the case of b equals to two, we are in the first case. In the case of b equals to three, we are in the second case. In the case of b equals to 10, we're in the third case. So all of these, that equals to negative one, right? Number three row, row number three, we have log base two, one, log base three, one, log base 10, one, and they're all equals to zero. So that's probably not any coincidence, right? That's probably not any coincidence. It's log base B of one is equals to zero. Yeah. And next, log base log base b of b, and that is just equal to one, isn't it? You follow me? No matter what the base. Now, of course, we're going to verify that. We're going to justify that. Okay, we are going to justify that using our definition to justify that. Now, for two, for three, right? So now there's a, there start to be variations, but we still see that log base B of B to the power of two is gonna be equals to two. 
if this is a three and this is going to be three, right? And keep going. We start to have variations, but these two rows, right? If this is a six, it's going to be six. That's going to be six. Okay. And for two, when one is a four, it's going to be four. Right? Do you see that at the same pattern falls into those cases, right? If this is a half, oops. If this is a half, guess what? This is gonna be half. So for all of these, we found these patterns. And in particular, have a log base B. Okay, uh, we have a B, another exponential form base of heart. And that is going to equal to heart. Okay, and this will cover this case, cover that, cover that cover, even cover this and cover that and cover that. It covers all of the cases. Yes, we agree. Do you agree? Okay. And let's see if that is true, if that is true. So I'm gonna copy this guy and move it to the top. found these patterns, okay? The log base B and the exponential base are the same, same base, and the answer is just the heart. In special cases, in special cases, okay? When the heart is zero and that is zero. When the heart is one, and that is going to be one. One b to the power zero, that's equals to one. So these are the three patterns we have found, haven't we? But the question is, are they justified? Are they true for every base? Less than, greater than zero, not equals to one, okay? So let's, let's check it out, let's check it out. Right? Is this justified by our definition? Is this justified by our definition? Right? So omega now is here. And there's a triangle. So omega is V to the power of heart. So triangle must be equal to heart. So this triangle must be equal to heart. And therefore, this is hard. You see, this is justified, right? By definition. So this observation is also supported by our definition. Our definition goes like this. If omega is one, and that's one, and so this must be zero. So this must be zero, and that is zero. You can see that? So from special case to general case, we go back and forth, back and forth, and we discovered that these are the general form. So if this is b to the power one, right? So this is a b to the power one. So triangle must be equals to one. So this must be one. And therefore this must be one, right? So from these studies, so what have we discovered? We have discovered that this guy, okay? So I'm gonna put it in a table. The three columns, right? So this one being one, and that one is being another special case another special case. They're all well supported. They're all well supported by definition. 
So far, so good. Does everybody follow me? Yes. So, so far, we'll be just focusing on this definition. All focus on this definition. And we have derived for base two, base three, and base 10. So are we ready to do some more? Let's do some more. Okay, so let's do some more. And this time we're gonna change to base five. We're gonna change to base five. Okay, your turn. Okay, your turn. I'm gonna make uh, eight. Rows. Okay, you can use any mean you want. You can use any mean you want. Okay, so the base the, the base is going to be base five. Okay, so base five. So I'm going to give you one over twenty five. Base five of one over five. Base five. One, base five, five, base 20, base five, 25, base five, 125, base five of square root of five, and the base five, sorry, base five of should I give you? One over root five. How about that? Just the number there. And you're gonna give the answers. Okay, so please give the answers. Okay, any reason you want, any reason you want. I just want that single number. the answer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so I'm going to just copy this number, pick the stitch. There. Give me the answer. Okay. Um, wait, shall we start with Alan? Alan, so what is the log base five of one over 25? Have your scratch paper ready. Have your scratch paper ready. have our definitions, we have all the work we've done. Very good, perfect. Number two, what's the answer to number two? Marcelo? Marcelo, what is the answer to log base five, one fifth? One answer is a positive one and the other answer is negative one. So which one is correct, right? So if I'm the teacher, I look at the answer, one student give me answer, um, one, st one, one, one student give me the answer, um, right? One, one student give me the answer, uh, right? One student give me the answer one, and one student gave me the answer negative one. So how do I check? How do I check? I will go by definition. I will go by definition. Okay, so what I will do, I will take this definition and I'm gonna check, okay, I'm gonna say, oh, this is the omega and the base is a five. The base is a five. Okay, and the omega is one fifth, right? Sorry, this is one fifth. 
So my question is, what number power five give me one fifth? Five is equal to a one five, one fifth equals to one, uh, five to the power of negative one. So triangle should be equal to negative one. Right, so I go by definition. And so this one is not gonna make it true, right? So that's wrong and that's right. Do you guys see how that's done? Okay, so for negative one, the answer is negative one, the student get two points and the other student lose two points. Got it? You're not going to say, oh, I'm going to just put a number there to see what happens. You have to make sure your number will support you to get those points, to get those points. Is that clear? Is that clear? So this is the wrong answer, and that's the right answer. Okay, so how to check right here, definition. Okay, so let's try again. Let's try again. Number three, what is the log base five of one? What's the answer? What is the answer? So negative one is the answer, right? You get it, Marcelo? Okay. Negative one is the answer. And that's how you work it out. That's how you work it out on scratch paper. Okay. You should have all of these pieces. These are the scratch paper work you want to do. Your teacher doesn't need to see. I don't need to see that. If you do want to show me, however, you want to make sure you done, have done a perfect job. Because if you want to show me that, if you want to show me your scratch paper work, and I'll be very, very careful checking every detail. So if there's anything wrong, you might suffer the loss of point, okay? So treat this as a scratch paper. Okay, S-C-R-A-T-C-H. Is, is that the right spelling? Scratch paper. Okay, so this is the part you work on the scratch paper. You, I just need to see the answer. So what the answer for number three? What is the answer for number three? Hmm? What is the answer for number three? Alan. Zero, that's right. Okay, you check the reason. How, what's the answer for number four? Marcelo? Okay, Alan gave the, gave the answer. Thank you, it's one, it's right. How about log base five or 25? You can work out a little bit. You can work it out a little bit, right? 25 is five squared, right? So what's the answer? Two, perfect, Francisco. Okay, how about log, log base five on 125? You can also work out the detail a little bit, right? 125 is five to the power of what? Three. That's right, equal to three. Now, log base five, root five. Log base five, root five. What would that be? What would that be? 
Marcelo. What is the answer? We can work out a little bit, right? Can we work out a little bit? Can we change the way of writing root five to five raised to the power of what? One half, which is equals to, equals to what? Oops. What is it equal to? Five, it equals to five. Well, suppose it is five. How would you check your answer? How would you check your answer? You go back to the definition, right? You take your answer that your answer is in the place of, of triangle, right? And your and your, uh, you know, your root five is here, right? Root five is in the place of omega, and this is five. And so this is a root five, right? And the base is right here is five. So if you think the answer is a five, so the triangle is five. Is five to the power of five equals to root five? What is the five to the power of five? Five to the power of five is five times, five times, five, five times. Does that equal to the square root of five? Obviously not, right? Obviously not. So think again. So what should that answer be? What should that answer be? It's not right, right? It's wrong. No, it doesn't work, right? So what should that number be? So what should that number be? So five is not, right? So we continue the search. We continue the search, right? So what number power five gave us root five? What number power five that gave us the root five? Everybody, put on your thinking cap. What is root? What is root five equal to? Isn't root five equals to five to the power of half? That's right. Okay. You see, power five to the power of triangle equals to five to the power of half. Therefore. The triangle has no choice, but equals to half. Very good. Okay, you figure it out, Marcelo. Okay, so this is half. If this is half, of course, the answer is half. In fact, when you write this down like this, you can just bring down the half. See that? Which is what we just discovered. That's what we just discovered. Yeah, isn't that what we just discovered? Yes. Remember this we have discovered, right? These are the so-called shortcut. Okay, you don't have to go through the definition instead. You go, if this is a five and this is a five, and the heart is just hard. So now you have five, 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 and your heart is half. So half is the answer. You guys see that? So now let's work on number eight. So all of these can be done by using this shortcut besides using definition. Okay, you guys? 
this is the shortcut. If you want shortcut, this is the shortcut. We, we worked so hard to make that shortcut, didn't we? Right, for example, here you can write it log base five of five to the power negative two, right? And this is the log base five, five to the power negative one, right? And this is a log base five, five to the power zero. And this is a five, this is a log base five, five to the power of one. Do you guys, do you guys see this? Is, this is a shortcut. And of course you can always go to the definition. Do you guys see that? So now what would this be? What would be the answer to that one? Will that still apply? Of course. You just have to write it down in that form, right? What is that form? We have the base five there in place. We just have to express this part in x in five to some power. So what would that be? So log base five, and this is five raised to the power of negative half. Do you agree? Does everybody follow me? So the answer is what? Negative half. Oops, oops, oopsie. Okay, negative half. Wait, where am I? Wait, did I lose something? We're working on the five. Negative half, sorry, negative half right here. Do you guys see that? Did you guys see that? Shall we practice another one? Okay, this time we're gonna work, we're gonna practice the um, the notes, okay? And that is, that is called uh, alpha 55, alpha 55A, okay? Alpha 55A. Okay, alpha 55A. So I'm gonna give you, um, Oops, what am I doing? What am I doing? The cursor is sitting there. Okay. Okay. So, so far you can see from the definition we have harvested these patterns that we can use, right? We can use, but we don't have to. These are just one, one of the, those are, these are the perks. These are the perks, right? So let's look at alpha 55A. Okay, so I'm gonna choose some questions to do. Some of these questions we have already done. Okay, we have already done. Okay, so I'm gonna have, I'm gonna choose some questions. Uh, I think we have done all of them. We're pretty much done all of them. Yeah, we have pretty much done all of them. We did, or something similar. Okay, so let's look at something we call natural log, okay? Natural log. Natural log is a very important logarithm, even though it doesn't seem natural at the beginning, okay? So when we have a logarithm, base E, and you have, and then we have an omega. Okay, we have an omega there. Okay, so it's pretty much that this definition is 
we use a base E. Then you say, what is E, right? So this is E. E is a very interesting number. Okay, so I'm gonna ask this software to show you what is E. E actually is, is a value between two and three. In particular is 2.7183 followed by infinite number of digits. Okay, this is number E. Okay, but we don't have to worry about the actual value of E. All we have to know is E is a number, is a number between two and three is about 2.7, it's about 2.7. And you never ever have to be very concerned about what the actual value of E, okay? In the entire mathematical community or in the entire scientific community, E is a symbol that's reserved for this value, okay? E is a symbol that is reserved for this value. So what we are going to do is that we're gonna use E as the base. Can E be qualified for the base? Of course, E is larger than zero and it's not equals to one. So of course E is qualified. Then you say, why we want to use E? Because E is a very special number. A lot of phenomena, social, uh, so, uh, social economics phenomena has something to do with E, okay? E has also has something to do with your money, okay? In terms of compound interest and uh, so on and so forth. And E is a, is a number that is so important, even in the natural world, even in the natural world. There are books written about E, okay? So I'm gonna show you the book. Okay, I'm going to show you the book. But where, where's our, where's there? Do you guys see me? Okay, I have a, I have a book about E on my bookshelf. Okay, let's see if I can find it. Ah, oh, maybe it's in the other room. Okay. Okay, you know what? When I need it, I can't find it. Okay, that's always the story. When I need it, I cannot find it. But there's a book titled, you know, it's a story about E, okay? And if you're curious, you can find it. But so without further ado, I just want to tell you E is a very important number. If you are aspired in studying STEM, even for academic reason, you have to get rid of, you have to get used to E. You have to get used to E. All you have to know is E is a number larger than zero, not equals to one. It's qualified for the base. And you treat this number as a constant. Okay, you treat this number as if it were two or it were three. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this function is going to be, you know, in, in our in our consideration. Okay. So when E is the base, and we will write this in ln, it's called a log natural, log natural, okay? So this natural log, okay? So when, when you see ln, when we see ln, it refers to the base E, okay? And the definition will become this one. The definition become this one, okay? And then let's see what can we do about it, right? So I'm going to show you, okay, with all of these studies and discoveries we have found, I'm going to make another table for you to work on, okay? First of all, what would be Ln1? What will be ln1, right? Base, excuse me, base e. Well, if this is e, ln1 
it's gonna be zero. So ln one is zero. How about ln e? Right, ln e. Ln e is gonna be one, just like what we have done before. Okay. So I'm gonna put all four properties right next to us. Right next to us. Okay. So uh, one column. Wait. Just we just need four, four or five rows. So these are our uh, you know, source of inspiration. And this is our new definition, right? On E. And what else do we have? We have a these have done, and that is true for any base, right? And that is true for any base. And that is true for any base. And of course, they are going to be true for base E. You follow me? That's going to be true for base E. If since this is true for any base, since all of these is true for any base, so when base is changed to E, is it going to be what? It's going to be true. So Ellen, if this is changed to E, is it going to be true? That's become Ellen. If this is changed to E, and that's going to be true. So that's ln, and over here is E. E to the power of one, of course, is E. Okay, so that's what we have here now. Natural log one is zero. Natural log E is one. How about natural, natural log E squared? What would that be, Francisco? What will be natural log E squared? Right here, over here. It's two, right? Right? How about natural log one over E? That's ln E to the power of what? Negative one. And so that's equal to negative one. Okay, by the same token, what is natural log e to the power of negative two? What would that be equal to? What would that be equal to, Ellen? Ellen? So what's the answer of natural log e to the power of negative two? What will be the answer? You can use definition or you can use the shortcut, okay? That's the definition and that's the, those are the shortcuts. Helen, Francisco, Marcelo. Am I going too fast? Am I going too fast? Do you follow me? Do you guys follow me? Do you follow me? Okay, so what's the answer for ln of e to the power negative two, Marcelo? What would be the answer? You can either use a definition or this special definition in this case or using the shortcut. Which shortcut applies? So what's the answer? What's the answer here? That's right, negative two, right? So keep going. Ln e to the power of three, what would that be? Marcelo. Very good. Yes, wonderful. Ln e to the power of five equals what? Perfect. One more. Ellen, square root of e. What will be the answer? 
What will be the answer? What will be the answer? One, does it equals to one? If that equals one, that means one power e equals to root, root e, right? If you, if, you, if you go by this definition here, right? If this is a root e, square root of e, right? That's in the place of omega. And you tell me the answer is one. So you're telling me that e to the power of one is square root of e. How, is, is that true? Is that true? That is not true, isn't it? It's e to the power of half equals square root of e. So this is a half. This is a half. Okay. Notice, okay, the square root of e is e to the power of one. Okay, so I think by now you can do every question in alpha 55. You can do every question in alpha 55a, okay? This week you're gonna have another quiz and this other quiz will be quizzing you about what we covered in class, okay? What we covered in class, okay? So don't forget to, you already have a quiz posted. You already have a quiz posted, okay? So next, next we're gonna explore, we're gonna explore some other features of uh, logarithm, some other questions of logarithm. And uh, for example, this is a lot, uh, let's look at alpha 56. Okay, let's look at alpha 56, right? So for alpha 55, we have 55A, 55B, 55C. You only need to do A, okay? You are highly encouraged to do B, to do C, okay? So next, we're going to get to alpha 56, alpha 56, okay? So we're going to have a head start. So next week, we're going to focus on 56, okay? The first graph we're going to do is that we're going to graph, we're going to graph these two functions together, okay? One of the one function is going to be two to the power x, and the next function we're going to graph is log base two of x. So these are the two functions we're going to be graphing. Okay, and you know I I like to put them put things in table form. Okay, so we have two functions to graph, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna discuss the many features about these two functions, domain and range and uh, x-intercept, y-intercept and so on and so forth, okay? Like we have done before, right? We've done, uh, I think five or six functions before, right? We've done five, six and functions before with shifting and everything, including quadratic, including quadratic. Okay, so today we're gonna start, uh, start by graphing f of x equals to two to the power x. Okay, so we start from simple. Okay, we start from simple. So to graph this, I would like you guys to work with me. Okay, we're gonna work a table, okay? Uh, let's make five or six rows, three columns. If we need it, we just add them, okay? So we have our input, and we're gonna have our output, okay? Our input, of course, is x, and our output 
as towards f of x equals two to the power x. And then we're gonna put our input output together, input output together, right? And the input of course is x and the output is two to the power x. There, okay? I'm gonna give you some input numbers and you're gonna do the calculation, okay? So negative two, negative one, a zero. Okay, just easy numbers. Oops, zero. So your task is to assess these numbers, plug in these numbers, plug in these numbers. Okay, so for example, is negative two with the input, you're gonna put a negative two here. You're gonna get the numerical value in fraction, fraction preferred, I don't want, we don't need to see the decimals, negative one, and this is the power negative one. And this is zero, and that's power to the power of zero. One, okay, that's power one. Two, that's power two. So we get one half. You, you, you should be working with me, okay? Two, and this is four. And now we're composing the points. Input a negative two, output a quarter. Input a negative one, output is half. Input is zero, output is one. Input is one, output is two. Input is two, output is four. Did you guys write it down? And next, next we're gonna set up a rectangular system. Okay, and you please set up a rectangular system Okay, I'm just provoking a rectangular system set up for me and I'm making some adjustment on the graph, right, so we can see better off it. Okay, say the scales, right, so I'm gonna have just something like that, okay. And uh, I'm going to put it on next to the table. Okay, so this will make it a little bit easier to plot the points, right? To plot the points. So we are going to plot the points. We're going to plot the points. Are you guys there? Please do it with me. Please do it with me. I think I can make this a little bit smaller. Okay. So I'm going to put all of the points in place. Okay. Negative two, right? A quarter. So input a negative two, output a quarter. Right? And this is one dot. Okay. Another dot, negative one is the input, half is the output. Another dot. When input is zero, output is one. And uh, input is one, output is two. Input is two, output is four. And of course we can do more points, okay? If you wanna do more points, let's do one more point, why not? Input is three, so f of f of three. When the input is three, the output is going to be eight. Okay, so we have a one more point, which is three. The input output is eight. So I'm going to put this point on the chart as well. 
Okay, I'm gonna put that on the chart as well. Six points, six points. Okay, and now let's mark these six points. Can you mark all these six points? Let's mark these six points. Okay. I'm going to mark some of them and you're going to mark more. Okay. I hope you're going to mark more. One of the points I'm going to mark is 0, 0,1, which is the y intercept. Are you marking them, you guys? Please do. Okay. So I mark this point and I also going to mark this point, 1, 2. One comma two. One comma two. Just marking these points. Okay. Two comma four. Two comma four. Another point marked. Two four. So marking these points is a you know, if I want to keep it longer, right? I, I can certainly use the the zoom uh, feature, but it, it just doesn't last. I have to shift it. So I just want you guys to mark these points yourself. Okay, so all of these points they marked. The last point is too big. The points are too big. Big. Okay, so make it smaller. Eight. There you go, right? Input one, zero, output one. Input one, output two. Input two, output four. Input three, output eight. We have two other points, so let's mark them as well. Okay. One is the input to negative two. And the output is quarter. Hope this will work well. As you know, it can be tricky. Okay, that's good. And then one more point to mark. One more, one more point to mark. Okay, there's one more point to mark. The input is negative one, the output is half. You get it? Point seven five. Let's see if that works. Okay, it's trial and error to make it nice. And when you write it on paper, I want it. I want it to be nice and clear. I want it to be nice and clear. It's a little bit squished, so I should uh, do something about it. Okay, so maybe I would put it at just at zero. Is that better? This point. I think we should move it over. We should move it over. So did you mark all the point? Okay, finally, okay. So you can see to get the curve of two to the power X, we need to plot points. And of course we cannot plot as many points as we wish. We plotted six points, right? 
with these six points, do you think we're ready to connect the dots? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So we're going to connect the dots. Okay. Boom. We get two to the power of X. That's two to the power of X. How do you like that? That's called exponential function with base two. Okay. Exponential function with base two. Okay. Now, now, I wish you to observe so we can draw some conclusions about domain and range, right? Domain, you can see I have chosen some negative numbers for input. I have chosen zero for input. I have chosen some positive number for input. And among all of these numbers, all right, I got some negative, I get zero, positive. And I plug in the function, so the rule of the function apply to this input, and I get a bunch of outputs, six of them, six input, six outputs. All six outputs are positive. Let me say it again. All six outputs are positive. Okay. Can we imagine, can we imagine some more negative numbers, okay? Can we imagine some more negative numbers? Right, say negative 10, right? Negative 1,000. What will that cost, right? See, when we choose negative two, the point is here. When we choose negative one, the point is here. So if we keep choosing negative 10, so the consequence of input a negative 10, what will happen? That number is gonna be way smaller than a quarter. So this dot is gonna be even lower and closer yet. But even though that is the case, right? So let me make the fonts just a little bit larger, right? It's gonna be one over two to the power of 10. 1 over 2 to the power of 10 is a very, very small positive number, okay? It's, so the output is going to be above x-axis. It will never be 0. It's not a 0. It's going to be positive, okay? So let's look at if the input is negative 1,000. If the input is a negative 1,000, and we're going to have 2 to the power of negative 1,000. And the consequence is going to be 1 over 2 to the power of 1,000. This denominator is very, very big, very, very big. For example, this denominator is, is 1,024. So this is going to be even larger. But 1 divided by a very large number is going to be a very small positive number. So it's still going to be positive. So we can see in the picture, okay? So if we keep picking up numbers in this direction to negative infinity, the curve is only going to get lower, lower, and even lower, but never touch zero. That's the point we're making. It will never be zero. So this curve, no matter how small the input, the curve will never touch zero. But the, the input can be any real number. And the output will forever be positive. Do you guys follow me? Because it's obvious that these out output are positive. But as you go in that direction, as you would go into this direction, it's going to be forever positive. So this image, this is to help us to facilitate, this is to facilitate some imagination as the X approaches negative infinity, two to the power X is always positive forever. So your points, no matter what they are, right? This is a negative 1,000. And this number we, we're getting, this number is going to be 
a positive number. If you if our input is negative 10, then the output is going to be 1 over. Okay, this is 1024. Okay, you can verify that for me. So those numbers is going to be very, very small. So we will never touch, the curve will never touch x axis. So that's the point we're making. So now summarize, summarize. Okay, summarize the domain. Okay, summarize the domain. The domain of this function. Oops. Okay, the domain of this function. It's all real numbers. Negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range, the range, two to the power X is always positive, always positive for any number in the domain, okay? In one word, okay? This function is greater than zero, for any real, in one sentence, okay, in one sentence, for any real number x, okay? So we're gonna stop here today, and uh, Monday we're gonna continue this discussion, and be sure that you are getting ready for the next quiz. You're gonna have, you have two quizzes, and primarily focus on the introduction of logarithm, okay? Um, I will see you guys on Monday. Thank you for coming. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Uh, you guys participated very actively. That's great. Have a great uh, the rest of the day and the rest of the week. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye.